Hello and welcome to PA Academy. So in this video, I'm going to be taking you step by step how to draw an epicycloid and also how to draw a tangent and a normal to an epicycloid. So in drawing an epicycloid, there are, there are two major things that we are going to be given. And that is, number one, is the diameter. So that is the diameter of the rolling curve. I mean of the rolling circle. And for this video, I'm going to be using a diameter of 60 mm. So if the diameter is 60 mm, uh, 60 mm, that means the radius will be 30 mm. Also, we are going to be uh, needing the diameter of the directed circle. So in this video, I'm going to be using a diameter, so I'll represent that with capital D, of 240 mm. So that means the radius will be 120 mm. Now, if you know that uh, epicycle looks something like this, where we are going to be having an angle like this then with different construction. So at the end of the day, we are going to be having something like this. This is just a freehand sketch. Now, for us to get this angle that will be between this line, what you are going to do is you are going to apply the formula that is R over R. That is radius of the rolling circle over radius of, of the directing circle multiplied by 360. You can also use the diameter of the rolling circle divided by the diameter of the directing circle times 360. You still get the same answer. So if you are using this, let's put in our values. So that means you are going to be having 30 mm divided by 120 mm times 360 degrees. And that will give us, okay, so that will give us 90 90 degrees. So now these are the three values that we are going to need. This two will be given, then you can just calculate for this. And that's what I'm going to be using for uh, in this video. So if your value is different, just know that the steps are still the same thing. Just follow, use this formula, then you put in your values and then you get your angles, your angle. So now to start with, if you are drawing epicycloid, the first line that you are going to be drawing is going to be that of the directing circle. That of the directing circle plus the rolling circle. So the directing circle plus the rolling circle, that is uh, 150 mm, that, which is 15 centimeters. So let me do that. So this is uh, 150 mm. So let me also note this uh, 30 mm, that 30 mm points. So that is... This is, let's call this point O, let's call this point A, and then let's call this point C. So that means the distance from A to O represents the radius of the directing circle. As you can see, this is 120 mm. That's the radius of the directing circle. Why? This one at the top represents, that's the radius of the rolling circle. So let me extend this point of O a bit so that I can place my protractor on it. Alright, so I haven't done that, so the next thing is we bring in our protractor and then we measure the 90 degrees so that we can draw the second line. So make sure your uh, protractor is properly placed. So do the same thing here. Alright, so this is what we are going to be having. Now, at this point C, we are going to draw a circle with the radius of the rolling circle, which is 30 mm. So I'll bring in my compass and measure 3 cm, which is the same as 30 mm. So this is it. So I'll place it on point C and draw a circle. Now this circle that I've just drawn, I'm going to divide it into 12 equal parts. So that is, in dividing it into 12 equal parts, that will be at 30 degrees uh, interval. So that's 30 
60 90 120 and then 150 So just from those those points, make sure you just be drawing some like the diameter like this. So let me draw for the last side. So now I've been able to divide it into twelve. So the next thing I wanted to pay attention to this now is to divide this. I mean, now that we've divided it, now let's number it. To so number it, we are going to start from this point. So we are going to call this point point zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 8, 9, 10, 11, and then 12. So it's important to note this order you and where you are starting from. You are starting from those points. If you are starting elsewhere, it might, you might be having issues uh, with your drawing. So you start from this point in clockwise direction. So having done that, what we are going to be doing next is to measure our, bring back our compass. You can measure it from point O to, point, to this point 6. So which is um, 18 centimeter, yeah. So which is 18 centimeter. So you can just also decide to bring in your compass and extend it to 0.6. And then from 0.6, you are going to draw it to this other side. All right. So I already have my compass to be at my is that's 18 centimeter. So from 0.0 to that 0.6. So I'm going to be having something like this. So you can see so i also extend this place by another three centimeters so that means what we are having here is 18 centimeter that's 180 millimeter so the same thing from point o to point c so from point o to point c Point O to point C that's 15 centimeter. So you're going to do the same thing. And then from point A to point O, which is 12 centimeter. So let me just measure 12 centimeter here. So we are going to be having something like this. Now, the next thing we have to do is, you see this angle 90 that we are having here, we are going to divide it into 12 equal parts. We are going to divide it into 12 equal parts. So you bring in your compass, I mean your protractor rather. So this is a protractor. Why this is the compass? All right, so you divided this into 12 equal parts. Remember the angle is 90. So what we are going to do is, we are just going to have 90, degrees divided by 12 and that would give us 7.5 degrees so the distance apart is going to be 7.5 degrees so on my compass i'm going to be marking 7.5 degrees but i'll be starting with 15. so now i can note the 7.5 that's the, the middle so i'll pause the video and divide the lines So now I've been able to divide it into 12 equal parts. The next thing I'm going to do is from point O, I'm going to be drawing a line that will pass through each of those points to the top like this. So if you already find the value in this video, please give it a thumbs up. So click on that thumbs up button to give it a thumbs up. And if you are yet to subscribe, please take out time to click on the subscribe button. All right. So we just keep radiating these lines to the top. To the top. 
to the top and then for the last one to the top like this so this is what we are going to be having so at this point now we had all those lines are touching this line that is coming from point C like this we are going to number them in this order so this first one is C0 this one we are going to call it C1 so this will be C1 C2 C3 C4 C5 C6 C7 C8 C9 C10 C11 and then C12 so these are the points I'm talking about so this is C1 this is C2 this is C3 C4 this is C5, this is C6, C7, 8, C9, C10, C11, and then C12. So, having done that, now from point O, you bring in your compass, and then you adjust it to where we are having 5. Because from 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, we are going to draw lines, we are going to draw something like an arc, like this, to come and touch this other side. So, you extend it to where we are having point 5. So make sure you're uh, properly done. So once you draw it, it will also pass through point one. You are going to have something like this. So you can see that of point five. It's looking blur. So that of point five is also passing through, passing through point one. See that of point five passes through. You are going to repeat the same thing on point four. So you bring back the compass. You adjust it to where we are having four. So where this line is touching the circle, that point four. So by the time you draw it, that of point 4 will also pass through point 8. You are going to have something like this. Same thing with point 3. Like this. The next one we are having is that of point 2. So you adjust your compass to touch point two. From point two, that of point two will pass through point ten. And finally, that of point one. So now we are going to be having something like this. So now if you are at this point, we are almost half, we are half done now the next thing you have to do is you are going to bring by your compass and measure it to the radius of the rolling circle which is 30 mm so that 30 mm is same as 3 centimeter so let me see all right so i already have my compass to be on 30 mm now from this point we name c1 from this point c1 you are going to place your compass on point c1 with a radius of 3 centimeter and you are going to draw an arc on this line one you are going to like an arc like this now this line that we drew from one that came like this to this point. That line, you're going to draw an arc on it. Same thing, you go to point two with the same radius of two cent of three centimeter. That is the radius of the rolling circle here. You are going to draw an arc on the line, line two, this curve two, like this. You're going to have an arc like this. So as you can see, same with three. On point three, this is the line three. On four, and then this is that of 4, this curve like this, you draw an arc. For that of 5, for 6, so for 6, this is going to be at the top. Then for 7, so this is 7, like this extends, so that is going to be at our right. So this is for 7, then on 8, you come to 8, this is going to be for 8, and then for 9, So this is for 9, for 10, so this is 10, so once you trace it like this, for 11, and then 12 is going to be on this point, So because if you put it on 12, it's going to be on this point. So let me confirm that of 3, so this is it on 3. So now those points, we are going to note it, so here. This is it here. This is it we are having here. 
So these are the points that we are going to be joining together to give us our epicycloid. So if, if you join these points that I'm just showing you and to these points. So if you are able, if you are once you join those points together, like that, that's going to give you your epicycloid. So in joining those points, I'm going to be using my French curve. So I'm going to be using the French curve to join those points. So you can also use any other drawing tools, uh, depending on the one that you're familiar with or the one that you have with you, to join those points together, and that will give you your epicycloid. So let's do that. All right, for the first point, so this part of my French curve is able to connect those these four points together. So I'll be using the French curve to join them. So you make sure you made it you make it very bold you make the curve very bold so that is for that side so that we are going to continue like that till we get to this point so now this part so gradually we are having our epicycloid so now to connect the top So for this side, like I said, you make it bold. So this is what we have now. So now let's connect this. I'm going to connect these three points. All right. So now to connect the last points together. So connecting those points, now we have our epicycloid. So this is how you go about to draw your uh, epicycloid. Now, in the next part of this video, I'm going to be showing you how to draw a tangent and a normal to an epicycloid. Like this epicycloid we are having, this same epicycloid, I'm going to be putting you through step by step how to draw a tangent and a normal to it. So that part two of this video, of that video, uh, of this video under epicycloid, will be coming up immediately after this video. It's coming up somewhere here. So once you click on it. It will pop up here once you click on it it's going to take you to the part two so just make sure you watch the video to the end uh, so also in the description of this video i'm going to be leaving link to other curves like how to draw a cycloid like what we are having here this is a cycloid i'm also going to leave a link how to draw something like this this is helix a cylindrical helix how to draw a parabola like what we are having here i know how to draw a tangent and a normal to a parabola how to draw a parabola you can see uh, how to draw a hypocycloid. This is just the opposite of epicycloid. This is epicycloid. Why this one is hypocycloid. So I'm going to be leaving the links to all of these videos in the description and many more of this particular video. So if you have any question or any comments for me, please let me know in the comment section below. And if you find value in this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you are yet to subscribe to this channel, PA Academy, please click on the subscribe button. So meanwhile, the part two of this video will come up here. So once you click on it and it will take you to the part two, of this video showing you how to draw a tangent and a normal to epicycloid all right so thank you very much and i'll see you all in the part two of this video thank you